thanks for keeping it Citizen TV. Time now for the briefs at 4 p.m. My name is Wahiga Mwaura. Now, President Uru Kenyatta this morning flagged off the first dispatch of vaccines from the National Vaccine Depot in Kitengela to other parts of the country. Now, nearly half of the AstraZeneca vaccines which arrived on the country on Wednesday, which is roughly 495,000 doses, have been dispatched to the nine regional depots. The next batch of vaccines is expected in the country either by the end of March or early April. If you ask any expert, there is no single country that will be able to be safe unless all of us are safe. So we all have an obligation to ensure that this vaccine is made available as widely, as cheaply, and as quickly as possible to all citizens of the globe that the vaccine has arrived and will continue because we will get more and more doses until we meet our requirement. That does not remove from every single citizen the obligation and the duty to continue to maintain the health protocols that we have been given by our doctors, by our experts. We must continue with face mask wearing. We must continue with hand washing and sanitizing. We must continue with social distancing. Because ultimately, these are the factors that shall ensure that we are able to co uh, 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 combat and defeat this deadly virus that has accepted the, uh, um, infected the globe and that has resulted in a huge social as well as economic crisis that is global. All right, uh, from vaccine updates to by elections, Nandi Senator Samson Cherarge, Kimilili Member of Parliament, Didmas Baraza, Chesume MP Wilson Kogo, and Belgut uh, Representative MP Nelson Koech have been arrested and they are in police custody at the Bungoma Police Station. Now, the four were arrested this morning with police saying that they were intimidating voters. The police say the former legislators were driving around polling stations with vehicles full of weapons and higher goons in tow. The four, however, denied any such action, saying that they were monitoring the conduct of the by-election and daring police to provide evidence to back their allegations. We had just finished a press conference with you where our candidate, UDA candidate uh, Kakai, had uh, voted in his polling station and we were driving out of the polling station. There was a blockade and immediately they blocked all the vehicles. They didn't care who was inside except the drivers. All of us were roughed up and placed in the, in the police vehicle. There was nothing. And, and up to this point, I don't know why I am in this polling station. The same, same incident that I saw in Samweni. It is meant to intimidate um, voters not to turn out. At the same time, to intimidate leaders so that they don't go around looking at places where possible rig rigging might happen. Sere, serikali inatumika vibaya na wanatumia wenzetu maafisa wa Meanwhile, police in Matungu are searching for former cabinet secretary Rashid Echesa. The former CS is wanted of an incident where he allegedly assaulted an IBC officer. Now, uh, Citizen TV has a crew there monitoring the situation, and uh, we will continue to give you updates in our subsequent bulletins. But of course, it's a crucial test for political parties there as Matungu goes to the polls. It's a battle royale between UDA, ANC, and the ODM candidate with 13 aspirants in this uh, race. And the picture you're seeing there is the former sports cabinet secretary, Rashid Echesa, wanted of an incident where this video shows him allegedly assaulting an IBC officer. When he spoke to Assam Ogina an hour ago or so, he said the police were still on the lookout for the former cabinet secretary.
That constituency has about 62,000 registered voters. We'll see what the numbers look like from 5 p.m. when voting is expected to end. Uh, but let's take you now to uh, Nakuru County where a standoff ensued in the London ward by election as unknown assailants caused a fracas at the Milimani polling station. Police officers lobbed tear gas canisters at MPs allied to the deputy president and supporters from different sides who were caught up in the 20-minute fracas. Four journalists, amongst them Citizen TV's Evans Asiba, a cameraman, were attacked and injured to varying degrees in the process. The voting exercise at the Milimani polling station, however, continues with just a few hours, actually just an hour or so, to the close of this voting exercise. Idadi bado iko chini at least hapa milimani idadi iko juu kiasi even though hatujafikia kiwango ambacho tunataka lakini ki, ki, idadi bado iko chini katika zile vituo zingine ambazo tumetembea na bado tunasihi watu hata kama pengine wako kazini kidogo waombe ruhusa wakimbie wa exercise hiyo right yao ya kupiga kura kisha warudi waendelee na shughuli i mean really you can't believe that this can happen in the present kenya but this is what it is. So many people were hurt. Uh, as you can see, somebody has been rushed to hospital. Some MPs have been hurt. So remember, uh, in Nakuru County, there, will be, there are by-elections in two wards, London, and we've just shown you footage from what's been happening there and Hell's Gate as well. We'll give you more details about what transpired and the results as they start streaming in anytime after 5 p.m. when the polls are expected to close. But let's now take you to Nairobi County, where a Nairobi court has directed that former Governor Mike Sonko be examined by a psychiatrist at the Kenyatta National Teaching and Referral Hospital, KNH, to confirm whether he he is fit to stand trial or not. This is after the court was told that he was examined by a doctor at Aga Khan Hospital. And according to the doctor's report, Sonko is mentally unfit to stand trial. The court noted that although the two reports have noted the issue of bipolar, the issue of being mentally unfit has not been captured in this report. Earlier, Magistrate Douglas Ogoti had been forced to call off court proceedings after a heated exchange between Sonko's lawyers and the prosecution.